Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 8, Part 1 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, presenting further related information about the laws of compensation, focusing on the metaphor of attempting to reap what has not been sown at all, and the role of compensation in forgiveness and repentance. The session was recorded on the 13th of December 2017 from 11 a.m. in Wilsdale, Queensland, Australia. Welcome back, everyone. We are here continuing our discussion on forgiveness and repentance. This is a long series that we're presenting for our channel. So Jesus and I have been talking a lot about compensation in our past couple of sessions. And today we're going to complete our discussion about compensation and how it relates to forgiveness and repentance. So today we'll be focusing specifically on the compensation for doing nothing or trying to do nothing, as we'll see. <laughs> so before we start, uh, welcome Jesus. Hey, and, <laughs> and we'll do a quick, very quick review of what we've already talked about so far in this series. So do you want to lead us off in that, Dylan? Hmm. Yeah. So the first thing we'd like to say is that if you haven't watched the previous sessions already, we'd definitely like you to go ahead and watch those because otherwise you won't have anything and probably much of an idea of what we're talking about today. So already there have been seven sessions and this is the eighth session today. So uh, if you haven't watched those seven sessions, my suggestion is to go back and watch those seven sessions before you uh, actually engage this session that we'll be going through with you today. Now, just as a revi revision, um, I suppose we could break up our sessions into, into more like subjects. Uh, yeah. So that's what we'll do. So in session one and two, we focused on God's laws generally, and we looked specifically at how do you determine God's truth mm -hmm. and what are the truth of God's laws as well? And how do you determine God's truth about forgiveness and repentance? And then we presented some of God's truth about forgiveness and repentance. And we looked specifically at the emotional processes involved in forgiveness and repentance. Mm. Then in session three, we talked about our responsibility to forgive and repent. God makes us responsible for those processes. And we talked about the concept of sin and we saw that accidental sin very rarely occurs. Most sin is intentional, whether we'd like to know that or not. And we talked about developing sincerity when it came to forgiveness and repentance. Yes. And then we really began this discussion about compensation, which mm -hmm. has been going since session four. And we've had quite a few sessions already up to seven. So we've already had four sessions on the subject. Now, the first session, we introduced the concept of the law of compensation and how it impacts upon, you know, the concept or the metaphor of what you sow, what you will reap, what you sow. Yeah. And then we examine the significance of compensation after death, because there is some more significance to it after death because that's when you notice it more feels it's not, more tangible sometimes. yeah it's not yeah. that it that it happens more then it's yeah. just that you notice it more and then we talked about the feelings and emotions involved with sin and desiring personal truth and then we started focusing which is what we're going to continue today on compensation in, in three primary areas if you like and the mm -hmm. first two areas were compensation in kind so you reap in kind with what you sowed yes. and then there's the yesterday we just we discussed the whole com the whole principle of compensation that's proportionate mm -hmm. in other words you reap proportionately to what you sowed yeah. and today we're going to focus on something which is the third subject yes. of those particular things yeah so today we'll talk about the effects of doing nothing in compensation what we what we reap when we sow or attempt to sow Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> and, and also we look at some reasons why we might attempt to sow nothing yes. <laughs> and uh, what, what's going on in, there for, in that for us emotionally it's as well. It's really a discussion about inaction, isn't it? Yes, yeah. and why we are so prone to inaction. Yeah. yeah. So that'd be an interesting discussion today. And most people are not aware that 
And if you're prone to inaction, then from God's perspective, you've got a lot to mm. be to to be repentant for. Yes. And this is something that what we this is the reason why we need to raise the uh, issue, because uh, there are many people in the spirit world who are now in in places that, where they're paying the penalty, if you like, or paying the uh, they are reaping the reward yes. of a life spent on earth barely doing anything at all yeah. and in fact uh, trying to remain ignorant trying to not do as get away with doing the least possible and all those kind of yeah. things from god's perspective is a very very uh you know something that god wants to correct very strongly yes. and uh, and because god knows that if we don't do things then we can't experience things and we yeah. can't be happy so he's always trying to correct that quite strongly and the laws correct it so we, we need to discuss this issue in detail and i feel today's discussion is going to be fairly interesting for mm. most people because mm -hmm. most people may have considered that maybe if they do nothing then it means that they won't get any uh penalty or any consequence associated with it yeah. because they've avoided doing anything and that's not the case at all and we'll discuss that yeah mm. introduction to compensation and expecting to reap when i do not sow <laughs> So this is the start of our third part of our yeah. discussion. <laughs> I, I, love yeah. I love this subject. <laughs> yeah, and there's this, I feel a lot of people will be able to relate to this because it's a very common problem on earth. Yeah. So, so let's get into it. Uh, we've been using this analogy, sowing and reaping, the harvest, uh, this, this whole uh, farming <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> metaphor <Yeah. laughs> to help us understand <clears throat> compensation. And mm. so today we're going to look at this third aspect, which is what happens when we don't do anything or we try not to do anything um, uh, or just avoid action in our life? Mm. What kind of compensation is involved there? Mm. And we have to point out that, as we did yesterday, that these things, this in-kind and this com commensurate or, um, commensurate or, uh, yeah, or, or, or um, proportional. proportionate compensation all of these are aspects of one whole working of compensation. They don't exist alone. And not the only aspects either. That's right. It's yeah, just so, what we chose yeah. for these discussions, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So this this idea of how compensation is applied when we do nothing is not in disharmony with what we've already spoken about. No. But we're going to come to see that there's no... It's very hard to do nothing. And from God's perspective, it's all, it's really impossible. And also doing nothing uh, betrays some very, very uh, strong, uh, unloving emotional yes. conditions. So, so, so while we're doing nothing, we might say we're doing nothing, we're actually doing quite a lot that is unloving. At the soul level, yeah. At the soul level, and yeah. that compensation is then applied to, to those that. things. Yeah. So yeah. let's get into it. Yeah. Okay, Derek. So in this session, we're going to discuss things in the following way. Yep. First up, we're just going to talk and define compensation and the effect of doing nothing. Then we talk specifically about why we might expect to gain things or reap a positive harvest when we do nothing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which many people on earth actually have an expectation yes. of. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then we'll talk about how predictable and reliable this um, the compensation is and the compensation as applied to this topic. Yeah, of doing nothing. Of doing nothing. Mm. Um, then we'll look at some questions. I always call this the but what about well, section. Oh, hang on. <laughs> hang on. <laughs> what about in this case? What it, I think it's like this. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll uh, hopefully make things really clear by discussing some examples, some specific examples at the end. Mm. And then as this is our last discussion relating to compensation in this series, we're going to talk then a bit about how compensation helps us with forgiveness and repentance, how it can lead us to forgiveness and repentance and how they're all related. And how it provides universe. a feedback me mechanism of whether we are forgiving or repenting yes. as well. So yeah. that, that'll be an interesting discussion in itself. Very interesting. Mm. Compensation and the effect of doing nothing. In relation to compensation principles, what are the effects of doing nothing? <laughs> yeah, well, the first thing I feel we have to say here is that from a soul perspective, it's impossible to do nothing. Um, and, and 
a person might say, but what if I'm anesthetized or something like that? <laughs> well, even then, it's impossible to do nothing at the soul level because your soul still has a condition. Mm. It's still creating things. It's still doing things. It still has emotions stored in it. It still has desires stored in it. It still has, you know, beliefs and, and thoughts, mm -hmm. even though you're, you know, you might not be conscious of them in your physical form. Yeah. And, and as a result of that, it is always doing something. <laughs> it's sort of the inescapable <laughs> truth of being a created soul by God. Yes. You are created to act, move and create. It's just always happening, yes. whether you want to or not. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And God's done that for very specific reasons. And, and the main reason is that God knows that it's the experience of life that also becomes a possible of the experience of love and happiness. Yeah. So without, if a soul could switch off and do nothing, then that would never be, you know, it would be possible for someone to never experience love or happiness mm -hmm. or any other emotion for that matter. And therefore, it'd be impossible to exercise will in that mm -hmm. state. So God's made it impossible for us to, to not have an exercise of our will. Mm. And, then, and this is a very good design, actually, because yeah. many of us on earth would prefer to shut down our will. Mm -hmm. And, and if, we, if we could shut down our will to such an extent that our soul was completely shut down, then we could basi basically anesthetize our soul mm. and then not have any experiences all for many hundreds or even thousands of or tens of thousands of years. Mm -hmm. And this would be very damaging to our future growth and experience. So, mm -hmm. so there's a very important reason why God's designed our soul so that we have to experience something all the time. Mm. But all of that being said, we can exert resistance towards that natural state, can't we? We can, and we can try to do nothing. Yes, and we can, <laughs> we can actually choose physical inaction, emotional inaction. It's still all kind of bubbling away in there, but yep. we can suppress, we can resist, we can sit and... We, we can choose a lack of awareness, you yes. could say, a lack of awareness of our thoughts, a lack of awareness of our feelings, a lack of awareness of our desires and intentions. Mm -hmm. and, and choosing that, which is what many people do on earth, has some very detrimental effects, actually, mm -hmm. and also indic indicates a very poor underlying condition of love of self as well as others, yeah. which we which we'll discuss now in this yes. section here. We'll start to see some of these effects. Yeah. But it's important to note that the soul itself cannot shut down. No. And all you can do is attempt to do it through effort. So and, really, uh, and that's a very important thing to note. Sorry. Yeah. So so in this discussion, we're basically discussing the desire to not act that and the choice to withdraw from experience and physical action yes. which is very common on earth yes. and and an emotional awareness so these these choices that people are actively engaging so they're not doing nothing they're doing this thing yeah they're actively <laughs> making a choice to resist doing something yes <laughs> exactly so that's really what we want to talk about yeah. now that we've kind of so, we're, so when we're it. saying you're doing nothing yeah. we're, we're actually really saying no, it's impossible to do nothing, yeah. but you're actively making a choice to try to do nothing. Yes. <laughs> and, that, and that is something. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, so every time now in this discussion, when we talk about doing nothing or inaction, that's really what we're talking about. Exactly. Let's talk about some of the negative effects of that. Yes, yes. Some major negative yeah. effects. Firstly, um, obviously, if I expect to do nothing, surely I should expect to reap nothing. But that's not true, actually, mm. we find. Yeah you will reap something yes. from doing nothing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is something where people go, hang on a sec, I thought the law of compensation was proportionate, you yes. know, so yes. if I do a little bit, I'll get a little bit yes. and so forth. But then if I do nothing, surely I'd get nothing. Mm -hmm. But as we've just pointed out, there's really no way to do nothing. Mm -hmm. And all we're doing is resisting the development of our soul when we attempt to do nothing. Mm -hmm. And there are penalties associated. There's consequences, corrective consequences associated with attempting to do nothing. <laughs> And really, it's almost like you're doing far more than doing something because you're actually putting a lot of effort into opposing the natural design of, of your soul, soul yeah. which is to do things continually. So when you're actively resisting, you it's not it, it is commensurate because you're not just doing a little bit, you are doing a lot. Yeah, you're doing a lot to yeah. suppress the natural operation of your soul. Yes. So, so you are doing a lot. That's yes. why there is a lot of penalty associated yeah. or a lot of consequence associated with it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
So yeah. very important to understand that. Yeah. Second thing is if we look at actions only rather than just thoughts and words and so forth. So physical actions. Just physical in actions. The world, yeah. If we do nothing, then obviously we can benefit no one, yeah. including ourselves. Yeah. So the, just taking an action to do nothing. Remember, our soul is always having thoughts and beliefs and feelings. Mm -hmm. We can't stop all that anyway. Yeah, yeah. But but if we can stop our actions, which we often do, and mm -hmm. um, then then by stopping our actions, we're not doing anything to help ourselves or others. In other words, we're not doing anything that's loving. Yeah. And we're and we're not engaging love as a as a practice. Yes. So that, that that's obviously from God's perspective a very negative thing to do for your life and for the life of others. Yeah. God's created you as a very powerful individual, mm -hmm. and if you do nothing, you're basically like not experiencing, and the people around you are not experiencing the benefit of what mm -hmm. God created anymore mm -hmm. because of your suppression of yourself. And a lot of things just remain as potentials only. That it's just like, oh, I had an idea. We talked a bit about this in yesterday's discussion. Yeah. I had an idea to do something. I thought it was really good, but I didn't act and I didn't do anything, didn't take any risks. I didn't didn't physically do a thing. So that was all just a potential anyway, you know. It, That's right. It's, there's no benefit because we didn't engage the potential for yeah, the benefit. There's, there's yeah, there's 7 billion people on the planet. I'm sure the majority of them have good ideas on a daily <laughs> basis, but we don't see many of those ideas benefit humanity. No. And the reason why we don't is the majority of people are dedicated to doing nothing about them mm. for, for lots of different reasons. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, it's also when I choose not to physically act mm -hmm. or we could say here also to be self-responsible mm -hmm. which you talked about in our third, third assistance, assistance group, group yeah. in 2016 was that now yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're nearly in 2017 I know. Um, which is really um taking responsibility for all of my feelings and choosing to act yeah. um so if I don't want to do that, if I expect to, to be able to not be self-responsible and not take any action, I, I'm basically demonstrating a very selfish attitude, aren't I? And I'm demonstrating the attitude of expectation that other people will act. Because how else am I going to feed myself and how else am I going to have a happy life? Well, or even someone have, else have is a place have to, to live in or have a... Have yeah. a, you know, have the water to drink or the food to eat or, you know, how are you going to do any of those things without doing something? Yes. <laughs> so I'm expecting other people to supply it. And that is a huge expectation mm -hmm. on this planet today. There's so many people who expect somebody else to give them what they are really, from God's perspective, mm -hmm. responsible to develop for themselves. Yeah. And we see this happening all the time. And it's just yeah. a, and, and a lot of it is for a lot of the different emotional reasons, which we'll discuss later. But it's important to note that the world we live in today, very few people actually are creators or the creators that God designed them to be. Yeah. Most of us are users of other people's creations. Yes. And that, and that is a, that's a poor a reflection upon our character or our, the attitude that we have. Mm. Yeah, you and I have often had discussions about even being responsible for understanding just a basic understanding of the computer that you're using exactly. or the the appliance that you're using every morning yeah oh. how much electricity it burns how 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 does that electricity get generated what yeah. damage to the earth does that yeah. need to have to yeah. happen to, for that to yeah. occur and all of these other th questions are all ignored yes because we are all just like a great big machine yeah. drawing from the creations of others without any consideration to its sustainability yeah. or, or its advisability actually yes. and so these are things we you know that demonstrate a very poor condition of love where we're not concerned about others or the environment or any of these things we're only concerned about getting our wants met mm. and and that's in a very unfortunate state that humanity is now in and it causes a lot of destruction on this planet as well as a lot of the wars and other major problems on the planet mm -hmm. are caused by this underlying attitude that i should be able to do nothing but people should still give things to me and i should be able to feel safe secure comfortable physically and emotionally yeah. without should me having to do anything, anything. about yeah. it yeah yeah so that is also demonstrating, and we'll talk more about the emotions later, but there's quite a lot of anger and or fear in that. Yeah, I would say attitude. rage rather than yeah. anger. It's like a, it's a very rageful position 
not wanting to do work that is going to benefit yourself at least or yeah. some and and, and others mm -hmm. is really an expression of anger about something in your past and yeah. and you need to address that anger if you're ever going to get out of that condition yes yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah okay fear as well obviously but fear is a lot about you know getting the approval and acceptance uh, of others and avoiding criticism and all those kind of things they are also motivations but deep down we are angry about them because we we don't want to be criticized and, and and my feelings are well if i go ahead and do what i know is right to do if somebody comes along and criticizes me who cares like yeah. at the end of the day like it's just their criticism they don't know what they're talking about i'm i'm doing what i need to do being responsible yeah. You know, so so why am I so invested in the criticism or, or 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 contempt of others? You know, there has to be underlying things that say I'm justified to mm. you know to worry about what people think of me and 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 be concerned about. And a lot of that is anger mixed with fear. It's not just fear, as people yeah. would suggest. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um. And this, when we're trying to do nothing and we're d avoiding physical creation or action, uh, we're completely disengaged from this desire aspect of our soul, which, as we've just mentioned, yeah. is th some of the biggest part of who we are. It's, it's inherent in all of our nature. Is Not only that, God's highest laws are all dependent upon desire. So yeah. when you're suppressing desire, you have no ability at all to engage any of God's higher laws. Yeah. Now you are governed by the lowest laws in the universe, yeah. right? The lowest laws that govern the soul, govern your soul. The lowest laws that govern your spirit body, govern your spirit body. Mm -hmm. And the lowest laws that govern your physical body, govern your physical body. And, and all of them are punitive, to well, not punitive, but corrective Very to, to a large degree in the sense that there are penalties associated yeah because we're so resistive to doing anything good or anything yeah. right, you know? Well, and, and just simply the state of wanting to avoid personal desire is a very painful state. You accrue compensatory pain very quickly. It's not only painful for ourselves either, it's no. painful for others. It's like, if, you, if you're ever in a relationship where the other person doesn't have any desire for you, what do you feel? You yeah. feel like, oh, they don't really want me. They're just in this relationship for selfish purpose. <laughs> or really. who knows why, or who knows why they're here, really. Yeah. You know, like, and, it, and it causes us to sort of get into this place of what do we do? We don't know what to do. We're waiting for the person to have a desire, but they never have one, you know. Mm -hmm. And sooner or later, these kind of people are very frustrating if you live with them. And so very, it's very difficult, not just for ourselves, but also for the people who live around us. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, obviously, as you mentioned about the lowest laws operating upon us, we're going to attract negative things into our life, aren't we? To try and help us help to expose the severely unloving state where we're attempting to live in. And desiring to remain in, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Like we're attempting yeah. to live in it, but we're also desiring to remain in it if we're in it. Mm -hmm. And and we usually are very resistive in this place. Yeah. So so there's got to be a lot of events happening in your life to try and trigger this resistance to yeah. get us out of the state of resistance. Yes. Yeah. And and so we in the end do attract a lot of painful correction. Mm. And, and, it, and we feel it as painful because we're so resistive. Yes. You know, if we weren't so resistive, it wouldn't be so painful. And so to, to, for somebody who's in this state, because there's a lot of anger in them about acting, they're going to have to release some of that anger in order to change. That's right. They're yes. going to have to acknowledge that anger's there, feel about it, feel about its cause, yep. and actually let some emotion go. Yeah. Otherwise, they will attempt to re remain in this inactive state yeah. continually attracting events and illnesses and problems and and, that... and it, it requires a supreme effort to remain in an inactive state mm. actually mm. much more effort than it requires to go and do something <laughs> in those cases so so you know it's going to be something that is it, there are a lot of corrections that are going to be aimed from the law at you mm. to try and correct you away from that state mm. And, uh, and most of us don't respond to it. We just resist more strongly mm. and, and we resist more strongly. And a lot of these resistances that get stronger and stronger and stronger are actually eventually lead to us killing someone or war mm. or, you know, the, these, are, these are the kinds of resistances that really uh, traumatize the whole planet, not just individuals on the planet. Yes. So collectively, we have a big problem with this, with, yes. with attempting to do nothing. And is it fair to say that some people have this as a fairly global issue in their life? 
Then there's others who have it in certain spheres of their life where they're, I'm never acting to change that. I'm never acting to create in that. I'm always going to expect someone else to act to make me feel comfortable in this area of my life. And Mm. so wherever that's existing in someone's life, a desire for inaction, this compensation is going to be applied in that area of their life because it's an in-kind compensation. That's right. Um, And there's going to have to be anger and fear dealt with in order to move forward in that area of our life. Yes. And what I find, though, is that when it comes to physical action, most people prefer that. But when it comes to anything that might mean emotional action, Mm -hmm. a shift in your emotional condition, Mm -hmm. most people are highly avoiding that. Yes. So when I say highly, they're extreme with their avoidance. And this is what I notice for most people on the planet that we meet. We, we see this extreme level of emotional avoidance while at the same time a, a desire to do physical things. Mm. So there might be a desire to have to physically act to do something, but when it comes to the avoidance of the underlying cause of mm-hmm. their problems, which are all emotionally related, there's no desire at all to repair it. Mm-hmm. Now, you see this, uh, these kind of examples in things like the medical profession, where, where everyone wants to be able to just take a pill and be cured, yeah. right? Yeah. But they don't want to have to go through the emotions required mm-hmm. to actually really cure oneself. Mm-hmm. They don't want to do that because to them, the emotions are too traumatic mm-hmm. to, to bother going through. And instead, they prefer to take the pill. And the majority of us would prefer to take a pill for the rest of our lives mm-hmm. rather than go through one emotion that lasts one month. Mm-hmm in order to fix the problem permanently. Mm -hmm. That's how extreme we are Mm -hmm. with our lack of action when it comes to emotion. And of course, since the soul is emotional, we are having a supreme amount of shutdown of emotion in this process. There's got to be an intense corrective response by the law of compensation to get us out of that state. Now that intense correction is usually the what causes our physical pain, eventually suffering and eventually disease and death. Mm. And and so this aspect of inaction when it comes to the law of compensation is a large contributor to our growing old and dying. Yes. And dying in extreme agony and pain mm. through different diseases. Mm. This is the major contributor yeah. to it, this inaction. So, you know, we need to start to see this inaction as a very serious issue in our lives and to address it and particularly forget about addressing it just physically like we always do and physical action is always a good thing yeah but we need to take the emotional and thought-based actions that need to be taken to shift our belief systems yes for there to be any real shift on them on this issue yeah and it's very important to state that in this introductory phase yes And perhaps the final thing we can say about this is that um, obviously love causes us to act. Love love motivates action in the way that you've just said. It motivates physical action. It motivates us to to want to make shifts emotionally in order to love ourselves and others and our environment. And and for it to be natural to love others and and ourselves and our environment. So when we have that aspiration to love or even some love growing within us, we will act. So when we find there's areas of our life or huge, lots of areas in our life where we are resisting action, we're angry about action, we're just not, we're trying so hard not to act. That's showing there's a lack of love in us. No love at all in those areas, probably. Very little at all developed um in those areas yeah and naturally god's trying to teach us about love and the law of compensation is a loving law teaching us about love so naturally there's going to be a lot of correction that comes our way as a result of our lack of love yes so it's a it's a very severe problem this problem of of the you know doing nothing or Mm -hmm. attempting to do nothing and compensation God, the compensatory laws, the law of compensation and all of its byproducts are there to correct it. And, mm-hmm. and because it is such a negative thing for everyone as well as yourself to do mm-hmm. nothing, it is, there is very high amount of corrections yes. that are imposed upon the soul yeah. in order to get to motivate or get a person to, to start to do something yeah. and particularly to start to do something about their condition, yes. about their emotions, about their beliefs not just 
about their actions, but about their beliefs and their emotions that drive their actions. Because the law knows that it's the emotions and the beliefs that drive the actions. Mm -hmm. So naturally, the law is trying to correct the emotions and beliefs yeah. even more than it's trying to correct the actions. Yes, mm. yes. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot more we there's can say, but there's a lot of questions we're yeah. going to go through. So <laughs> Let's we, move on and yeah. I'll say it later because I know there's a whole section. So yeah. <laughs> the reliability of compensation and reaping nothing when nothing is sown. So here we're going to talk a bit about um, the compensation for inaction, as we've just been discussing, mm. as defined, as we've just been discussing, and how predictable that is. Um, and there's two primary areas that we're interested in speaking about, and that is corrective compensation always applies to inaction, mm -hmm. and that corrective compensation applies in all aspects of my life and existence. Yeah. And... But we're also looking at this issue, so with three issues probably, <laughs> we're also looking at this issue of how doing nothing always has negative results too. Yes. Like you, uh, most people think doing nothing means there should be no results. Yes, and that's the <laughs> irony. That's the irony that I was about to mention later is yeah. that often when we uh, have engaged a bit with life and we feel like, oh, that was scary or painful, <laughs> I'll just do nothing, then nothing bad can happen. The irony is that it's... There'll be worse things yes, happen. Yes, worse things happen. <laughs> and, and there's good reasons why that, for that, why God has created it that way. And we'll talk about those yeah. reasons as well yeah. during our discussion. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Awesome. All right. So we've basically got those three things to cover, yes, haven't we? And, we do. and we'll cover them one at a time. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Corrective compensation always applies to inaction. So, if I do nothing, will I receive, will I always receive a negative compensatory consequence? Yes, always. <laughs> and and we, I think if a person goes back to our definition of what we're talking about in this section, in our previous uh, part that we addressed in the introduction, in the yep. introduction section, they'll see, you know, why that would be the case. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty obvious that, you know, whenever we choose to do nothing, there's a lot going on actually behind the scenes, particularly in our soul and our belief systems and our emotional condition and in our thoughts that cause us to be motivated to do nothing when it's so hard to do nothing. Yeah. It really, life, the way God's created life is that it, life is so interesting mm -hmm. and everything around us is always happening. You know, the na natural things in life are all happening around us all the time. There's always change going on. It's all designed to spark our curiosity and interest in action, isn't it? It is. It yeah. is. So it's impossible for us to actually consider doing nothing without it having quite a supreme effort to do mm -hmm. so. And, and so, you know, this is very, we're going to be very predictable now. Yeah. Whenever you attempt to do nothing, it is going to be very predictable that you are going to receive a lot of corrective compensation. <laughs> and there'll never be a benefit. There's never going to be a rewarding compensation for doing nothing. Well, it's always going to be corrective, isn't it? Yeah. So in the end, I suppose that is rewarding. <laughs> so, but it's going to be what we're terming corrective all the time. It's, and, and because we're so resistive, Correction is usually, when we're resistive, is usually painful. Yeah. So it also means that we're probably going to experience a lot of painful conversation here yeah. because we're so resistive to the corrective conversation. If we were open to the corrective conversation and loved it, yeah. then it wouldn't be so painful. Yeah. But, but the truth is that if we were open to corrective conversation, it's highly unlikely we'd be so shut down as to, or that we'd be trying to shut ourselves down and not do anything. Yes. Because if we were open to corrective conversation, we'd already be noticing that that caused pain. Yes. <laughs> so so for, the, for the majority of people on the planet, this issue of corrective compensation applied to doing nothing is a very large issue. And most people don't realize that when they say, oh, I did nothing, but I got cancer now, or I did mm -hmm. this and I have got that disease now, that they actually did a lot to get it. Yeah. And, and they've got to work through the emotional reasons as to why there's so much resistance mm -hmm. to the emotions that cause these particular problems. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Corrective compensation applies to inaction in all areas of my life. 
So does reaping nothing from doing nothing <laughs> <laughs> apply to all of the human soul's energy systems such as thoughts, words, actions, feelings, intentions and desires? Yes. So as we've, as we've just stated already, it's impossible to reap nothing from doing nothing because the reality is we're not actually doing nothing, but we're exercising a supreme effort to bottle down or control some of the major mm -hmm. areas of our soul in order mm -hmm. to give the appearance of doing nothing. Yes. So, so the reality is we're doing a lot. Yes. And naturally, when you do a lot in a negative direction, or in, a, in an unloving direction, mm -hmm. which is what doing nothing is, then of course there's going to be a large amount of compensatory things occurring at the thought level, the belief level, the emotional level, and based upon your lack of action. Mm -hmm. So, so it's going to be, it's going to affect probably every area of your life. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be quite intense what goes on in every area of your life. So we could, or if, if we use, I know we don't like using the word positive or negative, or, but if we say that my inaction it, there's never going to be a positive um, result. A rewarding outcome. A rewarding outcome. So in one way, if we're looking at the harvest as a rewarding thing, there will, if I sow nothing, do nothing, there will never be a rewarding harvest. It's never going to happen. No. And the fact that I'm using this supreme effort to shut down a lot of the basic and fundamental pathways of, of operation of the human soul mm. while, while doing it mm. means that I'm doing a lot in a negative direction. And that is going to have a proportionate <laughs> response. response. Yeah. You're doing a lot in a negative direction. You're going to get a lot of painful correction in that direction. Yes. yes. So, okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Doing nothing always has negative results. Is there ever a case where doing nothing can have a benefit to ourselves or others? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Mm -hmm. As we've already explained in the, up to this point uh, in our discussion, you can see that firstly, we're not actually doing nothing. Mm -hmm. We're actually doing, we're exercising a supreme amount of energy to control specific emotions and beliefs mm -hmm. and and we're we're trying to avoid them mm -hmm. and as a result of that we're, we're intensely doing something yeah and uh, and as a result of having the intensity of that doing something in a negative direction or in an unloving direction yeah. naturally there is always going to be a negative result so so the, or or, a, or a, a a corrective result a co corrective result mm. so what about i'm thinking now of a physical example mm -hmm. you know there's a family argument happening and someone's just sitting at the table doing nothing, nothing. while everything else goes on yeah what about in that case what kind Same of compensation applies. it's very yeah. negative yes <laughs> so could you explain that well let's look yeah. at it they yeah. could say some loving things yes which could have a positive impact upon everybody there mm -hmm. why are they sitting there doing nothing they're probably afraid mm -hmm. or they're probably angry yeah. in both cases there's a lot of unloving emotion coming out of them which means they are doing something in an unloving way mm -hmm. if they could choose to take a loving action and have loving words and have loving emotions yes. right in that place yeah. and it would have a positive benefit on mm -hmm. the outcome mm -hmm. it's never uh, it's never loving to just sit there and say nothing yeah it's, it's like and to do so it always is driven by fear now when i say sit there and say nothing you can say a lot of things and get to a point where nobody's listening to you at all. Yes, and now, then there's a different loving action to take, isn't it? Of course, it? Yes. and that loving action would be to withdraw, and if yeah. you're not allowed to withdraw, then the loving action would be then to say nothing. Yes. Right, so yeah. that is a loving action yeah, under yeah, those yeah. circumstances. But you would first try yes. to do all the loving things first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, that's not what I see people doing. No. <laughs> they're so worried and afraid that you know someone's going to get into trouble or they're going to get into trouble and so forth. They don't take the other loving steps that need to be taken beforehand mm -hmm. before you get into this state where there, there is little you can do to help the situation that is loving and you're physically prevented from getting out of the situation. Now, I was in that situation with Pilate in the first century. I had many discussions with him about truth and about love and all these other things. And it just got to the point in the end that, that he just wasn't listening. He wasn't going to listen. There was nothing more I could say. So in the end, what could I say? You had to say nothing. nothing. Right. Yeah. But, but I did a lot of things before then, mm -hmm. right, to get to that state. And this is what people dismiss. Yes. Yeah. 
Mm. That opportunity. Yeah. yeah. So, so God's laws are always motivating us to do the loving thing. This is what we need to bear in mind. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, when we choose to not do the loving thing, God's laws are now trying to correct us yes. from, from that choice because yeah. the choice is unloving. Mm -hmm. And the only time that we would ever stop and, and just pause and, and, and say, in this situation, there's little more I could do mm -hmm. is after you've exhausted every loving process you can take. Yes. Right. Yeah. That's the only thing that's left to you, loving, that's yes. loving to you, then is to say, no, I can't have any more engagement on this particular issue now. Yeah. We've, that's, that's it now. And, and withdraw. That's only after you've taken all of these loving steps. Yes. Right. Yeah. Now, that's a part of the process of learning how to love. Yeah. And, and most people don't understand it. So what do they do? Nothing. Nothing from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have so many false ideas that we want to hold on to of what is loving that we excuse and pardon ourselves or others for their inaction. Yeah. Yeah. A very Go important ahead. statement here we want to make, and that is the one that we've written right at the end here. It says, this tells us that God yeah. wishes to prevent us from wasting our time and our life. Now, that's a very interesting thing about God. He, he's basically saying to us, look, I gave you this gift of life and I gave you the gift of will and my laws expect you to do something yeah. right, about it. And if you choose to do nothing, you're never going to be happy. You're never going to be fulfilled. You're never going to grow. Right. So my laws are going to try to impel you in the direction of doing something. Mm so that you grow, so mm. that you change, so that you have some kind of enjoyment of yeah. things. Yeah. And, and, and this demonstrates to us that God designed, although he gave us this free will, he also designed his laws so that it'd be very, very difficult for us mm. to do nothing. To do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Very important point. Mm. All right. <laughs>